So today I'm going to cover a bunch of information about UV resin. I've had so many questions and lots of them are pretty complicated to answer. So I thought I would go ahead, cover as much as I could in this quick Q and A for lure makers. So stick around. <laughs> So first, let me define what UV resin is. UV resin is essentially a resin that is catalyzed by ultraviolet radiation. So ultraviolet light, as opposed to being catalyzed uh, by a, a hardener, a catalyst, a uh, part two of the resin. So it can either be uh, polyester like this uh, solar res, or epoxy like this Chinese brand, uh, or the Aluma UV, uh, both of which are pretty good products. I don't use the solar res very much uh, because I find it doesn't get quite as hard as the other two. It's a little slower to set up. I don't really trust it as far as yellowing. I used to use this a lot to fix my surfboards, but at that point you're doing at some remote beach and who cares if it yellows. I use UV resin primarily as a, a clear coat, but I found a ton of other uses for it. And I'll go into that uh, in a little bit here too. But let me remind you guys, I've done more than a few uh, videos on this topic. And what I'll do is I'll link the playlist in the description so that you guys can go check out all the other videos. The question is, why would you use this instead of a two-part resin? Well, the two-part part. part. <laughs> it's just so much easier to work with a one-part resin. The other thing is you don't have to worry about setup time. So you're not rushing against the clock to make sure it doesn't start to get gelled on you as you're trying to uh, sort of spread it on. The other thing is that you have other options to actually apply it. You can put it on with a brush, you can dip it out of a, a larger container, or you can actually spray it on with an airbrush or a, a paint gun. And I'll show you that in a minute. One of the real nice benefits, if you're uh, putting it on uh, with a brush, is that you don't have to throw away your brush. You can reuse your brush almost forever. If you've got a quality brush and the hairs aren't falling off, you can just put it inside a light proof container. I'm, I use these little uh, foil covered little canisters that, I, that basically you can buy at a hobby store and I just cover it with foil or you can just stick it in a little foil envelope and that works pretty well too and you just store it uh, in a dark spot. And that gets us to storage. Now I had some questions about uh, shelf life for this stuff. I don't know what the shelf life is. I haven't found it yet. I have uh, some UV resin that's uh, over two years old that still works fine. I put it on, it hardens, it's clear. So I don't uh, have any issue with it. Uh, but I would recommend if you're gonna store it for a long time, especially if you, you're buying a big amount and you don't use much of it, put it in a really cool and a very dark spot. I'll often use my refrigerator to store resins uh, because I just find that they don't oxidize as quickly. Now my recommendation is that you uh, apply it with the brush. The reason I say that is that unless you're actually making a lot of lures at one time, dipping uh, your lure into a, a vat of, of this stuff isn't really very efficient because you have to dip it and then you have to hang it, let it drip, and then you got to put it under the UV. And if you have a turner, you have to be sure that you can uh, go from dripping to a turner uh, without having to change anything or touch it. You've got to have enough <laughs> in a container that can, uh, you can get your lure into. Now this is a relatively small lure, but if you've got big lures, you're going to have to have a lot of material. The other thing is, is when you open up this big canister of resin, you expose it to dust and anything else that might fall into it, not to mention any UV light that might be coming through the windows. You'll have to go pretty slow in and then the same thing out so that you don't create bubbles. And at this point, you have to allow it to drip. Now you're gonna notice that this resin is dyed violet and uh, I'm gonna explain that to you in just a little bit. Right, so now as I allow this to drip, We'll go ahead and I'll show you how I brush it on. All right, so brushing it on is, of course, exactly the same as brushing on two-part resin. The only difference is that you don't 
have to hurry and you can uh, redo and remove at will. So if you get a hair in it or something or a piece of fuzz or something, you can just wipe it off. You can just take a lint free rag or piece of paper uh, and wipe it off, wipe it with alcohol and start over. And you don't have to use a harsh solvent that's going to maybe eat into your paint. Uh, and I'm just going to use the Aluma UV. Uh, this stuff is pretty good. I've had uh, some folks tell me they've had some issues with it, uh, but I believe whatever problem they had chemically has been solved. Uh, the ones I've bought have always worked well. The other question, as I'm doing this, <laughs> the other question that's always there is what about the cost? Now, this is going to be a little more expensive, but when you factor in the fact that you're not throwing away a dozen or more or dozens and dozens of uh, brushes, that itself kind of balances off uh, some of the extra costs for buying this. The other thing is you don't have to mix it in anything. So you don't have a cup or any kind of other container, a mixing stick. There's so many things that go into doing two-part epoxy uh, that uh, not only adds to the complexity, but also gives you opportunities to screw it up. I know I sound like I'm actually uh, selling these things. I don't, and I'm not sponsored by anybody. Now, one of the other things that's a, a pain in the butt for anybody putting clear coat on is bubbles. And one of the nice things about this is I never really worry about bubbles. The few that uh, show up, I can just wait and they, they just sort of off gas. They just come to the surface and pop. And to sort of enhance that, you can stick it in your turner and let it turn for like five minutes. As long as the lights aren't on, it's not gonna set up. So that means it's gonna allow those bubbles to come to the surface and pop. Now, you don't wanna leave it in there for hours because eventually you will find a spot that it sags to. All right, I'm gonna take the one that's uh, I've dripped and we'll stick this in the turner too. Looking pretty good. This is an old lure that uh, needed a little love. All right, and these guys uh, are ready, I think, for the lights to come on. All right, so there's one other way you can apply this that you can't do reasonably with a two-part epoxy, and that is spray it on. And that gives you a few other options. One, it allows you to put on a real thin coat without dipping. And two, it allows you to tint the resin. Now, I, sh I did a, a video on tinting uh, the UV resin gold and uh, brushing it on, but you can spray it on. And what that allows you to do is use stencils, even scale patterns. All you need to do is thin it by about 20% with denatured alcohol. I want to show you how you can spray on this tinted yellow uh, resin onto a shiny silver knife and turn it gold. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pour a little bit into my uh, little airbrush here. Now, unfortunately, the surface of this, uh, this blade here is not exactly as clean as I thought it was, but I think you can see that it goes pretty gold right there. Ends up looking really cool on a lure, not so cool on a butter knife. Now, I get a lot of questions about the lights, uh, what kind of lights to use, how many, uh, that sort of thing. And before I get into it in detail, let's just talk a little bit about the, uh, the question of to turn or not to turn, right? So lots of folks just use a box that they hang their lures in and that's fine. That basically means you're gonna be dipping and dripping, right? Because if you put it on with a brush and then hang it, you're gonna get a sag uh, because the brush puts on a lot of material. So my suggestion is to take your lure turner, if you've already got one, and just build a, a light box around it. You can use glass mirrors inside your box and get a really good amount of what they call uh, wattage density. And that's something we need to talk about when we talk about the lights. So let's talk about the lights. So I get a lot of questions. What lights should I buy? Should I, you know, I, I, can you buy some cheap ones? And the lights in here are essentially two of those uh, fingernail setting lights that have four uh, of these little uh, UV tube lights with the uh, two pin base. There are nine watts, uh, 365 nanometers. We'll talk about that in a second. And uh, each one of those lights came with four. So all I did was disassemble two of those little light sets and reassemble them inside my box and put the controls up here. Nothing fancy, a little bit of soldering. 
And the good thing is it's really inexpensive and they come with the light bulbs and these light bulbs are really inexpensive too. So when it comes to lights, there's two really important things. The wavelength of the UV light and the wattage. And not just wattage, but wattage density. And wattage density is a little difficult to calculate or even kind of imagine. It really is just how much of that light actually gets to it. So that really means lots of light really close to the, to the object. 365 to 395 nanometers are really, that's kind of like the sweet spot for this kind of resin. Now there are industrial resins, actually like the one I dipped in, that really prefers a, a, a shorter wavelength. I don't recommend that. It's a pain in the butt to find the lights. They're more expensive. And the radiation that comes from them is a little more harmful to your eyes and to your skin. Now you can also have a small spotlight. I, I like having this uh, because it allows me to just set things very quickly with my hand. This is, a, a, again, a, inexpensive. It's made by Quans. It's only 10 watts and it's LED. And it's really handy to use when you're, uh, say, coating a jig head or coating a, uh, the, the windings on a fly. And for using the UV resin as glue or filler, it's good to have it in a little dispenser like this. This is just a little uh, fine-nosed glue dispenser that I bought at a hobby store. I filled it, well, I painted it black, and then I put some UV resin in it, and that allows me uh, to fill in little voids like this little one right here at the surface, and I can just put a little drop and a half on here and you can see it's filled it and then all I have to do is put it under the light and uh, actually in 10 seconds it'll be hard enough for me to sand it back to a nice smooth consistency. In fact, it's hard already. You now know, if you're using it as glue you got to keep in mind that the light has to get to the resin. You can't actually stick it in a crevice or behind something that won't let light through. But if you've got something that lets light through like these little uh, clear plastic lure stands that I use for holding my lures to take photographs of. You can actually glue this stuff together real, really well because the uh, ultraviolet light goes through it. Let me show you what it looks like. You can see how it almost glows in the light and you can see how the light travels all the way through it and comes out the end. So you can use the fact that Lexan will carry the light and allow it to come out the edges. And you can use that to your advantage and actually set your Lexan bibs in your lures and it'll set all the way back in that slot. So what I do is just put the glue down in the slot and then I'll slip the bib in. And if any drools out, uh, I'm not really worried about it. And so now I can just take it to the light and the light will set that glue on the inside. and now it's set in there. It will not come out. It gives you a nice clean way to glue it without worrying about getting crazy glue on your Lexan because if you've done that, you know how badly it ruins it. All right, so the last hack with UV is that violet color I showed you in this resin here. Now, I, I put that in. If you're painting a chrome, a purely chrome lure, or a really white lure, Anything that if your resin goes a little yellow, that it would sort of ruin the look, you use a little bit of violet. And the reason is that violet is the complementary color of yellow. And as the light goes through the, the uh, resin and reflects back, the violet actually absorbs any yellow that might be there uh, from oxidation or the fact, the mere fact that the light has to travel through a thin, clear layer will actually tend to bring out the yellows in the light. So having the little bit of violet in that clear coat will filter out the little bit of yellow that you might get. All right, those things are looking pretty good. And I think I've covered pretty much everything that I know about UV clear and all the tricks that I know how to use. So hopefully that's helped and has uh, answered your questions. And the next time we'll get back to lure building, I'm gonna go to the house and get some dinner. I'll see you on the next video.